Okay, Steve. I think every Montanan would appreciate knowing who Mike Mansfield was. His life is an epic Hollywood movie, complete with a love story, historical drama, political intrigue, and heroism. His was a life and a career that can make all Montanans proud. <clears throat> From 1943 to 1988, Mansfield was a Montana congressman and senator, and then the ambassador to Japan. He remains to this day the longest serving majority leader in the US history, and also the longest serving ambassador to Japan, <clears throat> appointed by both Presidents Carter and Reagan. <clears throat> in the Washington Post called him the greatest living American. Senator Hugh Scott, a Republican leader, said he was the most decent man I've ever met in public life. Journalist Don Oberdorfer called him one of the most admired figures of the 20th century and a man of genuine humility. He was known in Congress for being honest and fair, for being a listener and a man of few words. He frustrated journalists and reporters with yup, nope, and maybe don't know answers. And he was first and foremost a man of humble beginnings and a Montanan. He declined all requests to authorize a biography, <clears throat> but gave a Washington Post reporter thousands of interview hours making this book possible. <clears throat> he only met with lobbyists from Montana. He replied directly to constituents. And if working late at night, he would eat a can of beans for dinner in his office. Born in Brooklyn in 1903, his mom dies young. At the age of seven, after his father is disabled in an accident, he is sent to live with an aunt and uncle in the back of a small grocery store in Great Falls. He becomes a habitual runaway, is placed in the Twin Bridges Orphanage, and eventually becomes a teenage hobo. During World War I, <clears throat> at the age of 14, he forges his enlistment in the Navy, serving on the USS Minneapolis in the submarine-infested Atlantic. When discharged, he joins the Army for two years, and then joins the Marines, serving in the Philippines and China, sparking an intense interest in the Far East. In 1922, he comes home to the only work available, shoveling ore in the Butte Mines, where deaths average two per week. He lives in boarding houses, spends hours in the library, and becomes a student at the School of Mines while working six nights a week underground. In 1928, six years into mining, he falls hard for a school teacher, Maureen Hayes, and vice versa. Mike says, she brought out the talk in me. Suddenly, I had a new friend, perhaps the only genuinely close friend in my life. She becomes the major force in his life. When Congress establishes a foundation in his honor, he insists it be named the Maureen and Mike Mansfield Foundation. And the same when the University of Montana wants to name the library after him. He agrees to a statue in the state capitol in Helena, only if it depicts both he and Maureen. It is Maureen who urges him to go to college and pursue his interest in history in Asia. Since he never went to high school, the University of Montana reluctantly accepts him as a provisional student. From 1933 to 1944, he earns a bachelor's and a master's and becomes one of the most popular professors on campus. Urged by others in 1940, he runs for Congress but loses. Following Pearl Harbor, he runs again, winning 60% of the vote. In December of 1942, Mike, Marine, and three-year-old daughter, Anne, drive an old battered Ford across a frozen nation to a war-dominated Washington. He quickly becomes the Far East expert in Congress. In 1944, Roosevelt sends him to assess the US fight against Japan in Burma, as well as the Civil War raging in China. On his return, he counsels the President and Congress not to support the nationalists against the communists as an unwinnable war. By 1950, Joseph McCarthy, McCarthy is inciting the Red Scare and targets Mansfield. Note Butte's location on his chart. He recruits a former communist to travel across Montana, claiming he has evidence that Mansfield is a communist. The man later confesses he knew nothing about Mansfield and was told what to say by McCarthy. 1953, Eisenhower becomes president and Mansfield becomes senator. They work together to support South Vietnam and President Diem as the only 
albeit inept, leader. When DM is deposed and assassinated, Mansfield grieves and begins to reassess support for the war. Kennedy and Mansfield formed a very close bond. It is Kennedy who convinces an unwilling Mansfield to become the Senate Majority Leader. And it is Mansfield who debunks Kennedy of the domino theory. Kennedy confides to Mansfield just before he's assassinated, he intends to pull troops out of Vietnam. But fearful of becoming the first president to lose a war, and despite Mansfield's urging, Johnson greatly escalates the war. While Mansfield will play a pivotal role in passing Johnson's civil rights and great society legislation, not stopping the war will haunt him for the rest of his days. History credits Nixon with opening the door to China, but Premier Zhou Enlai invites Mike and Maureen <coughs> to Beijing first and welcomes them in his hospital room during cancer treatments. While Nixon publicly endorses Mansfield's visit, he secretly orders Henry Kissinger to screw it up any way you can. <clears throat> he chose to be buried in Arlington Cemetery with the simplest gravestone, noting only private, oh, excuse me. While ambassador to Japan, U.S. submarine uh, sinks a, uh, a small ship, killing two and leaving without rendering assistance. He makes a very public apology um, and the Japan press says, a giant walks among us. He chose to be buried in Arlington Cemetery with the simplest gravestone noting only private U.S. Marine. Inscribed on the other side of the same gravestone is Marine, his wife. He said his proudest achievement was stopping the expansion of Flathead Lake. His greatest failure was not ending the war in Vietnam. And his greatest wish was just to be forgotten. Thank you. <clears throat>